Hi, I'm back. Uh, this week we're going to talk about the tarsal tunnel or tibial nerve entrapment. Tibial nerve. We've been in this region for the last couple of videos, so I thought it's not common, but it's a cool and interesting bit of anatomy. Okay, tibial nerve. There's the tibial bone. We saw the tibial nerve is in the posterior leg, the leg being uh, the bit of the lower limb between the knee and the ankle. And we have looked to see how it passes to the foot. So, what is the tarsal tunnel? How is the tibial nerve involved? How might it be entrapped? And what might the signs and symptoms be? I've been away for a couple of weeks, um, touring around Scotland and Wales for a bit of a holiday. And uh, you guys feel like a bit of a surrogate for my students because I like standing here and talking anatomy all day. I've been stood up wandering around for two weeks and I realise how much we sit down at work, it's awful. So now I'm standing up and talking to you. So thank you for being here. All right, tarsal tunnel, what do we need to know? Hmm, okay, well, recap. We saw, so lower limb, right? Left leg. Gluteus maximus, take that off. Now we can see the sciatic nerve. Take off the hamstring muscles in the posterior thigh. And now we can see the sciatic nerve continuing and at some point it will split into the tibial nerve and the common fibular nerve, also known as common peroneal nerve. We're interested in the tibial nerve, so it's posterior to the knee. There's the knee in the popliteal region. Calf muscles, so the muscles of the posterior leg. If we take the calf muscles off, we see the tibial nerve continuing to descend. So, um, the jobs of the tibial nerve then are largely motor to these guys, the muscles of the calf. These muscles pull on the calcaneus and lift us up. So we're standing on our tippy toes, that is plantar flexion. Um, and then, the tibial nerve we see Look, here's the big toe, so this is medial, right? The tibial nerve passes medially to get into the foot. And where it's going is the plantar foot. It's going to divide into medial and lateral plantar nerves. Down here, the tibial nerve is going to carry sensory innervation back from the skin of the sole of the foot. And it's going to innervate these little muscles, these intrinsic muscles of the plantar foot, of this side of the foot, of the sole of the foot, because the muscles on the other side are innervated by something else. So that's the tibial nerve. Now, how does it get around here and into the foot? We can't see it also, bony bits. Bony, bony, bony bits. Uh, so that was the left leg. Let's stick with the left leg to keep it keep it on the same side, might help, right? Okay, so you see, there's the big toe, this is medial, this is lateral, here's the tibia, the big shin bone, here's the fibula, the slender pin bone. Um, now, this lump here, this is a malleolus. If you grab your ankle, you can feel two lumps, right? The two lumps of your ankle are these two these two bits here, the malleoli, the medial malleolus and the lateral malleolus. So the, the medial malleolus is part of the tibia. Yeah? The lateral malleolus is part of the fibula. So we have the lateral malleolus and it's around this, it's posterior to the medial malleolus that the tibial nerve runs and gets into the sole of the foot. Da -da, job done, easy. No, more anatomy. There's actually a lot of anatomy in this region here. So what we're looking at here, these are the bones of the ankle. The tarsal bones. The heel bone is the calcaneus. The bone here that's articulating with the tibia is the talus. Tarsal bones. So we were talking about the tarsal tunnel, weren't we? I don't see any form of tunnel here. Right, so back to our foot and ankle with muscles on. Now you remember that we took off the muscles of the calf. I said that these big muscles are pulling on the, cal the calcaneus 
Uh, and these are big muscles because they can lift our entire body weight. Very useful when we're walking. But then deep, so deep to the, the gastrocnemius and soleus muscles, we have a lot more muscles. And these muscles also run to the sole of the foot. In here we have, um, we've got tibialis posterior, flexor hallucis longus and flexor digitorum longus. Um, what that means is flexor, they're flexing the toes. So they're gonna flex the toes, pull the toes that away. Uh, flexor digitorum, digitorum the digits, most of the toes. The hallux is the big toe. So flexor hallucis or hallucis is going to flex the big toe, which is really important, uh, and the longus. So these are long muscles because there are short versions of those muscles in the sole of the foot. So we have those muscles running to these toes somehow. How, how are they going to get there? Well, the reason we have these muscles in the calf is because they are big muscles, we want to be able to generate a fair amount of force and power through them. But we can't fit muscles that generate that amount of force and power in this little itty bitty part of the foot. So they're in here. And they transmit those forces through very long tendons. That's what we're seeing here. So we have the muscle in red, the tendon becomes this much more connective tissue whiter. It has, a, has less of a blood supply and what have you. This tendon is running around the medial malleolus into the foot. So we have the tendons of flexor hallucis longus, flexor digitorum longus, and tibialis anterior, sorry, tibialis posterior. What did I say last time? Anterior, posterior? It's tibialis posterior. Those muscles are sending tendons around the medial malleolus to get into the foot. Ah, this region is starting to look busier. Now there's our nerve, the the tibial nerve, and we can see an artery in there as well, the tibial artery. What we can't see are the veins. There are also posterior tibial veins in there. Suddenly this is becoming, very, becoming a very busy space. And there's more. See this connective tissue here? That is a retinaculum. So if those muscles are further away from, or those muscles are extrinsic, they're outside the foot, and they're sending tendons into the foot, there is a bit of an angle change here, isn't there? There's a, a, a roughly 90 degree angle change depending upon what position the foot is in. So somehow you have to encourage those tendons to make that angle change, to run from the calf to the foot. So they're tied down. This is where I need some sticky tape and some pipe cleaners. Okay, a retinaculum comes from the uh, Latin word retin, retinere, retinere, meaning to retain. So what a retinaculum does is it's retaining mostly the tendons but other things as well. And there are a few retinacula around the ankle tying various things down. We see the same thing in the wrist. There's a retinaculum here doing the same thing with the muscles and tendons of the forearm to the fingers and it's this retinaculum that forms the carpal tunnel. If you've looked at the wrist it's, a, um, it's continuous with the deep fascia in the leg. It's a tough, fibrous, so not stretchy like this tape is, a tough, fibrous connective tissue. And it runs from the medial malleolus to the calcaneus. This is an oversimplification because it's tape. But that is the flexor retinaculum of the ankle. And do you see what we've done? Now we've made a tunnel. So that is the tunnel, and there's a couple of gaps there made by the different bones, but there is a tunnel that things can pass around the ankle and into the foot. So, <laughs> what do we got? We got, we got an artery, we've got a vein or two because the veins often double up around the arteries, although textbooks don't talk about that too much. We've got one muscle, two muscle, three muscle. Uh, we've got the nerve in yellow, right? Our tibial nerve that started all this off. Hmm, our tendons are quite thick things. Ooh, look at this. 
So suddenly we're building this body and we've got to pass all of that kind of around here and into the and into the foot. It works. But can you imagine how if in life bones are not stretchy, this flexor retinaculum is not stretchy, these are all tough connected tissues that don't really have much give. If any of these things start to swell, they haven't got any space to swell into. Tendons with tendinopathies, they can swell. So if you have an injured flexor hallucis longus, flexor uh, digitorum longus or a, a tibialis posterior and that inflammation extends down into the, the tarsal tunnel, because that's what we've just created, then that tendon is going to swell and it's going to start compressing the other structures in here. In some nerve pathologies, the tibial nerve itself might swell and it has little space to swell into. Also here, remember that the anatomy of people is different. We're all different and that's normal. So the anatomy around here can be a little variable. Swelling might be caused by surgery here. Um, a, a, a loss of the arches, a flattening of the arches, a flat foot can change the anatomy here. So it can change the anatomy of the tarsal tunnel. Many of those things can cause compression within the tarsal tunnel. And sure, we've got blood vessels in there, but we've also got the tibial nerve. So what will happen if the tibial nerve gets compressed in this limited space? Well, I said that the tibial nerve, one of its jobs is sensory from the skin of the sole of the foot. It's also motor to the little muscles of the foot. And in here, we have little muscles that also flex the toes. So if that nerve becomes compressed here, we'll see nerve signs and symptoms. That is maybe pins and needles in the sole of the foot, a loss of sensation and numbness, uh, maybe a tingling, maybe a burning sensation. All sorts of different changes to sensation could occur if the tibial nerve is being compressed for any period of time. Um, on the motor side of things, these muscles in here may become atrophied or weak. So it may become more difficult to flex the toes. But remember that the muscles of the calf, including these guys, which also flex the toes, they will probably be functioning normally because the nerve has not yet been compressed. The nerve is compressed at this point, so structures distal to it are affected, but the nerve proximal to the point of compression is innovating all of this stuff, means that the neurons that are running as far as, as these structures are probably working just fine, which means you will probably be able to plantar flex just fine. And you can use, again, these muscles, of course, for flexing your toes. So that's what we might see. It is uncommon and many of the causes of this tibial nerve entrapment in the tarsal tunnel um, are unknown. It just happens for, as far as we can tell, no good reason. Um, and don't forget, of course, that um, nerves can also be compressed through external means. You know this because you you bang your ulnar nerve, your funny bone. So the tibial nerve could also be compressed by tight shoes, wearing a plaster cast, you know, things like that. So if, a tibia, if, you, have those, if you see those sorts of signs and symptoms of tibial nerve entrapment, the tarsal tunnel is just one thing you may think of. It's not the thing, it's not the definite cause. Anyway, there we go, that's it. The tarsal tunnel, is formed by the flexor retinaculum running between the medial malleolus of the tibia to the calcaneus and forming a tunnel deep to it through which the tendons of the posterior deep calf run through to the foot with the tibial nerve, the, tibial, the posterior tibial artery and the posterior tibial veins. All right, see, told you it was some cool anatomy. I think it's cool. I don't know. I just I'm frightening because I don't know if you think it's cool. Anyway, it is. See you next week. <laughs>